Hey home bakers, it's Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week, I feel this is a really important one, and I'm going to call it the first rule of homemade bread. Let's do it. Hey your home bakers, nice to see you every week. Welcome back and if you are new, we do this every single week. Consider subscribing for a little bit of bread making wisdom every Thursday. Let's go through with it. Today's gonna be a super fast one. And this week I'm gonna take a little side step from the content of this video as well at the end. Uh, because there's something else that I believe is really important that does relate to this but also to the world in general in 2018. How I get a lot of bread making questions from you guys, which is wicked by the way, I really, really enjoy it. So keep them coming. And there's the cat through the cat flap. <sighs> and every now and again, I get questions from you guys like, how do I make my bread as white as Jack's lovely jacket? How come it's not as soft as a loaf of Hovis? And why does it dry out quicker than shop bought bread? Which leads me on to rule number one. The first rule of homemade bread. Ready? Here it comes. Hold on. The brands that I mentioned here are not particularly bad brands. They're just examples of mass-produced bread. Continue. Don't expect that. Don't expect a loaf of bread crafted by your own hands to be a thick, square, white, anemic-looking loaf of thick-sliced king's meal because it ain't never going to be. It's never going to last in your cupboard for 23 days without drying out and going hard. It's just not going to happen. It won't even be close, and if that is your aim, then what's the point in making it? Go and buy it. The reason your bread is not like that is because you made it. It's as simple as that. It ain't full of additives and artificial this and that and whatever, and it isn't mass-produced, and that's why it will never look and taste like a mass-produced loaf of bread, and that is not a bad thing, in my opinion. It's not. Sometimes the cat goes back out the cat flap. Come on, get on with it. There it is. Sometimes people in class will roll up a loaf or shape a beautiful olive bread ring that is far from perfect. It's got these wicked crinkles on the outside of it, wicked flower crinkles that is only achievable by their hands, their technique, uh, and they are unique and they cannot be recreated by anybody else, no matter how hard they try, because they didn't try. It just came, it flows, it's natural, and that's the beauty of it. You want a loaf of bread that you can buy in Tesco's? Go and buy it in Tesco's. Uh, there's tons of it, or Walmart for you guys across the pond. You want a loaf that tastes amazing, that toasts up amazing with incredible crust and crumb texture and bounce? Make one. And you know what? It will look like you made it. It will look like you put love and patience and time and passion and energy into it because you did. And you can't buy that in a packet in Tesco's. So be proud of your homemade loaf. Be proud of the imperfections because you crafted it with your own hands and your own expertise. It will never, ever look like a loaf that you bought in the shop. And that shouldn't be the pinnacle. That shouldn't be the goal. The goal should be a loaf that tastes incredible and that you made, that you enjoyed the process and you feed it to your friends and your family and your kids and whatnot. And, uh, you know, they love it. Simple as that for that one thing. You made it. While we're on the subject here, there's something I want to mention as well, and that is what you see on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see loads of pictures of beautiful loaves, and you know what? I'm going to stick a couple of dodgy ones on there as well. I'm going to stick a couple of ones on there that are very full of imperfections, not quite right, didn't go quite right, because stuff like that happens, and that's absolutely fine. As long as you can slice it and eat it, you win the game anyway. Don't take too many perfect pictures on Instagram into account when you make your own bread because it can paralyze you, it can completely paralyze you and it's the same in life if you don't mind me rambling for a bit, all these pictures of perfection that people put out the whole time, it will paralyze you in doing what you want to do and making, being proud of your loaf that you've created because it doesn't look quite like that. And it's the same with me. I follow bread people all the time. All the loaves look epic. They look perfect. They've got a perfect tear on the top. They've got a perfect ear. They look perfect every single time. But don't be fooled. They're not perfect every single time. Bakers, in a sense, have got it easy, although 
I'm gonna speak about that in another video. I know they work very hard, but they've got it easy in a sense because they're practicing the whole time. People only take pictures of the perfect ones and stick it on Instagram, it's as simple as that. And it's the same across the board of all Facebook, all social media platforms and stuff like that. It's, we know, we all know at the end of the day it's a highlight reel, but don't let that put you off. Don't get obsessed by the detail. Make your bread, make it wicked, make it like you made it, like nobody else will make it. And that's it quick one today I hope you don't mind me rambling at the end but hey I think all this stuff is really important so go make your bread go make your bread and don't idolize that on Instagram don't idolize that on the shelf in a plastic bag in Tesco's peace out have a good week I'll see you next week bye bye